So we're into our third lecture on entropy as a property and how we use it in quantifying the second law of thermodynamics. So we can do second law calculations. So what we need to do now is to get a statement of the second law of thermodynamics in terms of that property entropy. So let's go ahead and derive it for a closed system. And that closed system um, basically has no mass transfer. That's the definition of it. True? So entropy balance for a closed system. So the, the way to think of it is think of, I know this is kind of abstract, but think of uh, state one of, and the system undergoes a process to state two. And that process goes along a path, let's call it path A, and that path A has some irreversibilities. But to complete a cycle, it has to go back from state two back to state one. And along that path, we'll call it path B, there are no irreversibilities, hence it's reversible. Now, we didn't label the x-axis or the y-axis, so it's kind of a generic property diagram showing you a cycle going from one to two and then two back to one. First along an irreversible path and then along a reversible path. One thing that is uh, common throughout th engineering thermodynamics is that when you have a process that is irreversible, you show it going from the initial state one to final state two, you use a dashed line, a dashed line. Just tuck that away. A dashed line indicates that it's an irreversible process or there's some irreversibilities along that process where a solid line indicates what? That it's reversible. So, so that's just an aside. Let's uh, take a look and apply this statement. The integral around a cycle of del Q over T is equal to negative sigma of the cycle. What is that statement? What is the name of that statement? Clausius's inequality, which was turned into an equality with the use of that sigma, the strength of the inequality. How far away are you from being uh, completely reversible? If you're completely reversible, that right-hand side is zero. Sigma is zero. Okay. So what we do is we say, let's apply it for this process. So we'll go along path A, going from 1 to 2, del Q, T. Then we'll go from 2 back to 1 along path B, del Q, T, and that's equal to negative sigma of the cycle. So we said this is a two-process cycle. And so think about A, 1 to 2, and then B, 2 to 1. But t B is reversible, isn't it? Isn't B reversible by, by the discussion that we started? So how do you tell if a process is reversible? You say is the reverse process possible? Can it be reversed? And so, yeah. So you could rewrite this as turning it around and saying negative instead of 2 to 1, go 1 to 2. Del Q T rev. Do you, do you see the logic in that change? Instead of saying a plus, right here, plus, going from 2 to 1 along a reversible path, we'll do this. We'll turn it around and go from 1 to 2 along the same reversible path. And then you have to change and put a minus sign in the calculus. It's like, uh, I know we don't do it much in, in, in calculus, but if you said integrate from x1 to x2 f of x dx, how is that related to the integral of x2 to x1 f of x dx? Well, it's the negative of it. It's the negative of it, okay? <coughs> Maybe that's not very used in calculus, but that's what we just use. Okay, so then we have this integral along the path from 1 to 2, uh, del Q over T. And this is negative sigma the cycle. Well, this, we already said, hey, you know what? We defined a property entropy last time, didn't we? Or in 1865, somebody did it. <laughs> okay, a long time ago. Clausius said, so along, if it's reversible, this is 
this is S final minus S initial, isn't it? Isn't that the definition of entropy change? So the integral del Q over T from 1 to 2 along a reversal path is S2 minus S1. All right, so let me just write down here the same stuff, bring it down. Minus sigma cycle. And what we want to do is we just do a little bit of algebra to get it the form we want. We're going to get S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of del Q over T plus sigma. Now, I forgot to emphasize this as well. This sigma of the cycle is, uh, you can think about it, it's like, look it, I'm going to have certain amount going along path A and then a certain amount along path B. For the cycle, you have, you could think of either I got the irreversibilities due to path, going along path A or along path B, right? Well, how much was along path B? Zero, because it was reversible. <coughs> and so when you say along path A, you could say that's sigma from state one to state two. Isn't that along path A? It's from one to two. So I should have substituted this and this. And this is where I wanted to get to. What? What do you mean this is where you want to do? That is the second law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a process. It's really an entropy balance statement. So the final amount of entropy compared to the initial amount of entropy in the system typically goes up. Well, what makes it go up? It can go up when you have some irreversibilities. But it can also go up when you have some, what is that? Transfer of entropy with heat transfer. So if heat is being brought into the system, it's coming, entropy's coming with it. And so if there's a positive del Q amount of heat being brought in, you divide that by T, the absolute temperature, now that's end. Not just a heat transfer, but it's entropy transfer with that heat transfer. So you sum it up over that process from one to two. This is the equation. What is this? It's the entropy change of the system. You could write it like this, the change in the entropy of the system, final minus initial. What is this term? The entropy transfer that accompanies the heat transfer. When you have an energy transfer with, by heat transfer, you also have an entropy transfer with it. All right. And then this is the entropy generation. I should uh, put 1 to 2 right there, subscript 1 to 2, because of the irreversibilities. All right. Uh, Okay, couple questions. Let's do a clicker question. Can uh, sigma 1 to 2 uh, be uh, 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 be uh, uh, less than 0? Can sigma 1 to 2 be less than 0? Can it be negative? Yes, it can. Answer A. No, it cannot be negative. Answer B. So let's go ahead and stop. What you do is you go back to where did this term come into, into being, into this uh, final relationship called the entropy balance or the second law? It came out of the Clausius' inequality when we turned it into an equality, true? And so Clausius' inequality said that the integral of del Q over T for a cycle was less than zero. To turn that into an inner inequality, we said that it's equal to negative something that's always positive. That's why we put the negative in there. Negative times something that's always positive. The lowest it could be is zero. That would be for a reversible cycle or reversible. Okay, completely reversible. So that still carries over. And so, can it be less than zero? No, it cannot. 
it, it, the lowest it can be is zero. All right. All right. Somebody's honest. Look at E. Look at that. Hey, no idea. Or a friend reach over when you're turning. <laughs> well, let's see how he votes. All right. So now this is a tough question. This entropy transfer term with the heat transfer, I'm looking at integral 1 to 2 del Q over T, right? Can this term be less than 0? A, yes, or B, no. So what term we talk about? That term right there. Can that term, the integral from state 1 to state 2, del Q over T, can that be less than zero? Can it be negative? Let's go ahead and stop it. So, uh, it can be, yes, it can be less than zero. When would it be less than zero? When uh, T is negative. No, T can't be negative. T is absolute temperature. T will never be. Temperature T will never be negative. It's always greater than zero. Uh, but what about del Q? It can be positive, or it can be negative, or it can be zero. When it's zero, you say, oh, it's well insulated, it's adiabatic process. When it's positive, oh, that's heat transfer into the system. When it's negative, oh, that's heat transfer out of the system. So that's how you can get a positive or negative term magnitude here. So this is correct right here, right? All right, now let's ask this question. This term, delta S, can it be less than zero? Answer A, yes it can. Answer B, nope, it cannot. So what about delta S, the change in the entropy? Can the change in the entropy be less than zero? Can it be a negative delta S? Let's go ahead and stop it, and let's take a toll. Let's see. It can be. It can be negative. It's like, can the change in energy of a system be negative? Sure. There could be a net reduction in the energy of the system because it transferred out. Could it be positive? Sure, the energy could have gone up, could have been some accumulation because transfer in. <laughs> Just like that, there can be some accumulation of entropy. Entropy could go up, or there could be some depletion of entropy. Entropy could go down. Just like your bank account. Money in, goes up. Money down, out, goes down. So this is, uh, yes, it can be negative. So the only term that's restricted the only term that's restricted to be greater than or equal to zero is entropy generation. Entropy generation term. Let's solve a problem. Uh, I thought I'd change this problem. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this problem on the fly. We'll do a CO2 carbon dioxide instead of helium. And we'll go from uh, 300 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin. The rest of the problem stays the same. So we have carbon dioxide is contained in a 0.3 meter cubed rigid insulated tank that has a paddle wheel stuck in it. The, heat, the CO2 is initially at 4 bar 300 Kelvin and is stirred until the temperature rises to 400 Kelvin. Determine the final pressure. So we want to find... P2 in units of bar. Let's do prob part A first. How do I find the final pressure? What all I see? CO2, carbon dioxide. What goes up? What do I think about? I better use the steam tables for properties. No, 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 no. CO2 is an ideal gas. It's an ideal gas. You could check its compressibility factor at these temperatures and pressures, and you're going to find it's a great ideal gas. So, because it's an ideal gas, I know that PV, or P cap V, is equal to, I'm going to write it like this, number of moles R bar T. 
at all times during the process. True? So the number of moles doesn't change. And R bar doesn't change. But it could be starting at P1, B1, T1, and it could end at P2, B2, T2. Those changes like that. So write the ideal gas equation twice and you find it, okay, the product P1 times V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Then you can cancel for this problem because it's a rigid tank. The volume doesn't change. And if I wanted to find the final pressure, I just need to know the initial pressure, the final temperature over the initial temperature. I stick in my numbers, and I find that it's 5.333333. I'll just stop at three significant digits but 5.33 bar. The pressure went up. All right. Part B, what is the work in units of kilojoule? What symbol do I want to use for the answer for part B, the work? Cap W or lowercase w? Cap W. And do I want to put a subscript on it? Sure, one to two. Think about it starts at initial state one and ends at final state two. What's the process? Well, how do I start? I, I know what I want to calculate, but how am I going to do it? What do I do? What should I do? I'm going to apply the first law of thermodynamics to the process, initial state one, final state two. And you'll see that's a pattern even in chapter six where we're dealing with entropy. Usually they require you to do something about first law and then the second law. So part C, guess what we're going to do? Second law. But for part B, first law. First law of thermodynamics. Conservation is a statement of it. Conservation of energy or energy balance statement. So we have from the first law for a process that we have Q 1 to 2 in minus the work 1 to 2 out equal to. I'm going to put it like this. Uh, cap U 2 minus cap U 1. Is it a well-insulated tank? So what about the Q1 to 2? Zero. So we'll continue this up here because uh, I, I'm going to do it this way. Work 1 to 2 is equal to negative the number of moles times U bar 2 minus U bar 1. What? What is this U bar? Per amount, it's per kilomole. So it's not the internal energy per unit mass, but it's the internal energy per unit amount in kilomoles. So we can get this U bar out of the tables. We can. So what we do is um, if you go to the gas tables, you can find that, uh, let me kind of write it up here, U bar 1 is U bar for carbon dioxide at 300 Kelvin, which comes in at 6939 kilojoules per kilomole. Does anybody have appendix with them? Can you tell me what table that is? A23. I, A23, is that right? So table A23. Likewise, you can get U2, which is at 400 Kelvin. So it's 400 Kelvin. U bar, and this is a U bar too, and that's equal to 10,046 kilojoules per kilomole. Okay, the only thing I really need is N. Well, N is equal to PV divided by R bar T, number of moles. True from the ideal gas equation? Let's evaluate it 1, 1, 1. So we'll put in the pressure at state 1, 400 kilopascal. Volume at state 1, 0.3 meter cubed. Divided by 8.314 kilopascal meter cubed per kilomole Kelvin. That's R bar. Divided by 300 Kelvin. The units will work out. But when you're doing this, I know I graded some exams last time, and, and they just people are too trusting that the units are going to work out. No, you're an engineer. You're a little skeptical. 
you've got to prove it to yourself that the units work out, not just trust them to work out, right? So you get the number of moles to be 0 0.04811 kilomole. You save more of them digits in your calculator, but you write down at least four on your as an intermediate step in the calculation. Now we can calculate that work, one to two, and it comes in at negative 149.5 kilojoules. So that's the answer to part B. Why is it negative? Because it's not work out of the system, it's work into the system. What's our system? The CO2. All right. Part C now. What is the amount of entropy produced? So what's our symbol for that? What's our symbol? Like W and P was the with the symbol of choice for answer for part B and A, but what's the symbol of choice for the entropy produced? Okay, I'll ask a clicker question. Uh, I think if your answer is A, I think you want to calculate S2 minus S1. Answer B, I think you want to calculate the integral of del Q over T from 1 to 2, or answer C, I want to, you want to calculate sigma 1 to 2. It says, Calculate the amount of entropy produced in units of kilojoule per Kelvin. What are we trying to calculate? A, B, or C? All right, let's go ahead and stop. Well, to guide us, maybe we go back and look at this equation right here, this slide. What did we say each of these three groups in the Second law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a process can be described in words as the entropy change of a system, thinking about accumulation or depletion of entropy, entropy change of the system, entropy transfer with heat transfer, or entropy generation because of irreversibilities. Right? So Armed with that review, what I'd like to do is I'd like to come back to this question right here and say, I want you to calculate the amount of entropy produced. I'm going to ask the same question. Only 30 seconds on this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop it now. So we'll stop. And now we'll go ahead and grade, right? So let's go ahead and show it. But let's see, this sigma is entropy production. That's our chosen uh, symbol. Now, in another textbook that I like to teach out of, some people, they've used, they've used this terminology. They put S gen instead of sigma. You know what? I actually prefer that. I prefer S gen, but this textbook, doesn't use S gen, they use sigma. So I tried to be consistent with the book. It, okay, so, so the best answer for the amount of entropy produced or generated is sigma one to two answer C. Let's see how you did previously. So 74% got it correct. Isn't that, a, you're teachable, you're teachable, there you go as a class. So only 29% were originally correct. But now, after a little discussion, 74%. If I asked the question again, I think I could get it to 100. But let's move on in the interest of time. Okay. So now, how do we calculate this answer for part C? Well, go ahead. What's the principle? Second law. For the process, we write down that and we say, okay, S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral del Q over T plus sigma 1 to 2. I want to calculate sigma 1 to 2. One of those groups of terms is zero. Which one? No heat transfer. So there's no entropy transfer with the heat. So if I want to calculate sigma 1 to 2, I could say, give me the amount in moles and multiply by S 
2 minus S1 bar bar, but then I'm going to isolate the function of temperature only and separate it from the function of pressure. That's a P2 and a P1 there, okay? Does that make sense? Instead of writing it using a mass basis, I put it on a molar basis. I have S bar not, and I also have the R bar and the natural log of P2 over P1. True? Does that equation look good? So we go right up to the same place, that same table, A3, and we find S bar not at 1. That S bar not at 1 is 213.915. S bar not at 2 is 225.225. The units are kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Running out of room. Kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Uh, professor, I forgot. Why do they put the bar on the S? Per unit amount instead of per unit mass. And why do they put that superscript not? Because it's only the function of temperature. It's that funny integral that we introduced last time. But it's the temperature only component for the entropy change. And then you need that R bar natural log of P2 over P1 to finish it out. So uh, let me do this. Let me just say all of these are calculatable. 0 0.429 kilojoules per Kelvin is the final answer. Uh, Let's say somebody calculated negative 0.5 is the answer. It's not possible. Either you have an error in your problem, or the problem has an error in it, you know, out of the textbook. Sometimes you can easily write a textbook problem that violates the second law of thermodynamics. But it's not going to be physically realizable. So, but I would encourage you, if you get crazy answers, to investigate why and probably look for your own error. All right, did that help? Ready to press forward? Um, I was going to solve it for helium. If I solved it for helium, I need to get the maybe the U-bars and the S-bar knots for helium. But is there a helium table? Is helium in the gas tables? It's not. What's special about helium? It still behaves as an ideal gas. Just like carbon dioxide behaves as an ideal gas, but the specific heat, C sub P normalized by R bar, is not, does not change as the temperature changes. We covered this in chapter what chapter? Chapter 3. So helium is one of these gases, like neon and like argon, it's flat curve right here. And that's at 2.5, meaning that the specific heat's not a function of temperature. So they don't put in the whole table accounting for variable specific heats for helium. Uh, professor, we have to remember that? Well, I wish you didn't, but if you give a problem with one of these ideal gases, which are monoatomic, isn't that the, the commonality between all of these? Does helium float around by HE2? No, it doesn't float around as a diatomic. It likes it by itself, just helium. Same with argon. So anyway, when you see these monoatomic ideal gases, you just have to say, light bulb comes on, <laughs> it's a constant specific heat. I'm not going to find a table. If there's only one table, and it's table A22, and it's embedded way down here, I mean, look for helium. You can't find it. Look for helium. Can't find it. Down here, monoatomic gases with a little footnote, A for monoatomic gases such as helium, neon, argon. C sub P is a constant over a wide range of temperatures and is very nearly equal to 5 halves R bar. So this alpha is 5 halves. What's the beta and uh, the gamma and the delta and the whatever? They're all zero, so you know, that's all zero, too. All right. But I didn't do it for helium. Now, 
we can write the first, uh, the, sorry, the second law of thermodynamics for a process, true? What is that process equation? S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral of del Q over T plus sigma, 1 to 2, true? Can you write it for an infinitesimally small process, not a finite change, but for a really small change? That would be ds equal to del Q divided by T plus some small amount of entropy generation. Now, why do we use this funny symbol in thermodynamics in front of the Q, and why do you use the same symbol in front of the sigma? Because they're not properties. That's why. That's the bottom line. They're transfers, or they're non-property quantities. So why do we use this D right here? Because it's a change in the property entropy. Now, if I take and I divide the whole equation by time, by time, put this dt right here, dt, and then write by time, then this becomes the rate at which entropy is being accumulated or increased in the system equal to 1 over the temperature, the rate of heat transfer into the system, and that's that boundary temperature at which it's being transferred in, plus sigma dot, the rate at which it's being produced. So we can have a rate expression for the second law of thermodynamics. It's not a lot different than the, the finite process, you know, for a finite process. You could do the same thing for the first law. Remember the first law? What was the first law? Uh, I can't remember the first law. Well, no, try harder. Okay. How about U2 minus U1 is equal to Q1 to 2 in minus work 1 to 2 out. I neglect changes in kinetic potential energy. So you say small, small, small change instead of for a finite change, du equal to del Q minus del W. Divide each term by dt, 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 and this becomes uh, the rate of change of internal energy with respect to time. You could write it u dot, but I think I, I, I could have just left it like this as well, ds dt, equal to q dot minus w dot. Very similarly, we have a rate expression for the second law of thermodynamics for a closed system. True? First and second law, both of them. So what is this ds dt? It's the rate of accumulation of entropy in the system. Now, if it's negative, that means it's depleting. It's going out. Your bank account's going down. The entropy balance uh, co content of the system is going down. So it can be positive. It can be negative. It can be zero. What is this? Well, here they put a sum in case you have multiple heat transfers in and out of the system. You could do that. So you could have some heat transfer in and some heat transfer out. But this is the rate of entropy transfer with that heat transfer. And then what is this? This is the rate of entropy generation. Other textbooks would write S dot gen, but this book doesn't do that. So I just mentioned now that it's entropy generation. When would this term be positive? When you have a lot of irreversibilities. When would it be negative? Never. It's an impossible situation. It would be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics if it was calculated to be negative. You'd say it's impossible. Very good. When it is, is it equal to zero? When everything is reversible. No irreversibilities. I think we have time to solve a problem. So we have this electric motor, and it's operating at steady state and it draws 10 amps at a current of 120 volts. So here's my motor, and we have an amperage of 10 amps, and you have a plus, minus, and an electromotive force, 120 volts. So there's power coming into that motor in the form of electric power. The output shaft has a torque of 10 Newton meter. Ah, come on, write it. Newton meter. And the rotational speed omega 
of 1100 revolutions per minute. Each revolution is 2 pi radian and each minute is 60 seconds. So now I've converted it from RPM to radians per second. The surface motor temperature is 45 degrees C. So right here we have that the temperature of the motor is 45 degrees C. You add 273 to that and you get its 318 Kelvin. And also the surrounding air, the temperature of the air is 21 degrees C. When you add 273, you get 294 Kelvin. Determine for part A the rate of entropy production within the motor. What are we asked to calculate? What symbol would I use to, for the rate of entropy production within the motor? Sigma dot. True? True. All right. Sometimes you can even do this. What are my units for what I'm asked to calculate? Used to be trivial. He's asking me to struggle. Temperature. I will think I'll give him the answer in cap T. In what units? Oh, Kelvin. Easy, right? But now it's getting a little harder, isn't it? It's sigma dot. And what would be the units on sigma dot? He's very good. Kilojoules per Kelvin second or kilowatt per Kelvin. Kilowatt per Kelvin. Very good. Somebody says, how do some people know the answers to the questions, Professor? Are they retaking this class? No, they're not retaking the class. Typically, they are just reading ahead. <laughs> Read the book a little bit before class. Pays great dividends. All right, keep going. So what we want to do is we want to introduce a control volume or a closed system. I use control volume, but here it is. No masses of back and forth, but I do have energy flow across in and out. So I'm going to have a heat transfer out, and I'm going to put Q dot out of the system. Now, I have the electric power coming in. This is, these are my ins equal to my outflows of energy is equal to, so the inflow of energy is only from electric power. The outflow is shaft. W dot shaft and Q dot out. So what I find is the, the calculate the power electric in, that's the product of the current and the voltage, the EMF, isn't it? And for the shaft power, that's the product of the torque and the rotational speed. Now I need that rotational speed in radians per second, but that'll work. And then this Q dot out, I don't know, but I'm going to calculate it. What I find is that for the electric motor, we have 1, 2, 0, 0 watts of electric power in. We have 1, 1, 5, 1 1.9 watts of shaft power out, meaning that there has to be 48.08 or 48.1 uh, watts of heat transfer out. For, to balance the system, energy balance. Very good. Now we go and we say the second law for that system. The second law, and it's a rate equation, not for a process. For it's, it's a rate base. So we say the rate of change of entropy within the control volume with respect to time is equal to the rate at which it's flowing in with heat divided by the temperature of the boundary in which it flows in minus the rate at which it flows out with heat divided by the temperature of the boundary at which it goes out plus the rate at which it's being produced. Make sense? And I, this term right here, I have a plus. And a lot of times when you have a summation there, you're, you're counting for the positive heat transfers in minus the heat transfer outs. That's what I did there. Put a negative on that out. Okay, why is this zero? Steady state. Why is that term zero? There's no heat transfer in. There's only one heat transfer out of the system. So what we find is that the rate of entropy production, what we're asked to solve for, is equal to Q dot out divided by the temperature of the boundary at which it goes out. It's equal to the 48.1 watts divided by the 318 Kelvin. And so we calculate the rate of entropy production to be 0 0.151 watts per Kelvin. 
That's the answer for part A. Look at for part B, it says, now consider an enlarged system, including the motor and the nearby surroundings so that the heat transfer occurs at the air temperature. So for a larger system, the heat transfer, the same amount of heat transfer, Q dot out, same amount, but it occurs at a lower temperature of 21 degrees C. For that larger system, you go back and make the same calculation, and you find out that it's 0 0.164 watts per Kelvin for part B. You say, something tricky is happening here. How come this has gotten larger? How come it's increased? What are the sources of irreversibilities? Friction is the big one, but heat transfer through a finite temperature difference. So the, in the air, you had it at 318 Kelvin, you had it at 294 Kelvin, you had Q dot coming into it of 48.1 watts, Q dot going out of 48.1 watts, and so the heat is just being transferred, but it's going through a finite temperature difference and there's entropy generation due to the heat transfer in the air. It's irreversible. And that's why it's a larger sigma dot for part B. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you Friday.